What if I told you we can turn this steak into this powder today on the lab? Now there's powder all over me and it looks very questionable. This is tapioca maltodextrin. That was a stupid idea. For my 35th birthday this year, my wife surprised me with this amazing tasting dinner at a restaurant called Republica in Portland. One thing that stood out the most to me was this. They called it Wagyu Snow. But I know that Wagyu is very expensive, so we're going to make three different versions of this. One is going to be a brown butter snow, one is going to be a bacon snow, and then we are also going to do that Wagyu Snow. Now because I am working with questionable substances, I am going to be wearing an apron for the lab. For the brown butter snow, I'm just going to be using about 35 grams worth of unsalted Good old Irish butter, this is the good stuff. Now the reason why I'm using unsalted butter ju is just because I wanna control the salt content here. Brown butter is super easy. Legitimately just have this on a low medium heat and we're going to start cooking this butter until, well, it browns. Now make sure you pay attention. Once your butter has melted and it is fully melted here, it can brown very quickly. So don't walk away from this. Make sure you're paying attention. This is already starting to slightly turn color. And what's nice about brown butter is it gives a nice nuttiness to the flavor of the butter. Now you can see, hopefully, you can see I have mine turned off because it's starting to get super brown already. This is when we want to pull it off the heat and remove it completely from this pan so it doesn't overcook. I'm going to put this in the most heat proof container I have because this fat is very, very hot. Get some of those brown butter bits and this is, this is where a lot of that flavor sits is the brown butter at the bottom, hence the, the brown butter. Now we're going to let this cool down for just about two to three minutes and once it's cooled down, Time to turn into that powdery, questionable stuff. Now, as you can see, our brown butter is slightly separated. Now, this isn't perfect like ghee or clarified butter because we did brown some of the solids. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully skim off some of the top, giving us that beautiful golden brown butter underneath. That's what we really need. It smells so good though. I, if you guys have never browned or clarified butter before, it smells amazing. This is all that we were able to remove. It's really, really not much. It's not a ton of butter left. Now that we have this beauty, look at the, look at that's gold. This is gold, golden brown. Now we get to make brown butter powder. Now to do this, you are going to need some sort of a, a blender of some, like I'm using the cheapest little stick blender thing, hopefully. Yep, still works. But this is all about the ratios. So in this case, we need to see how many grams of brown butter mixture we have which do, it doesn't look like too much. We're just gonna dump that right into there. So we have, I'm gonna say 20 grams worth of brown butter. So that means we need 22 times 90, nope. Nope, 22 times 90%. We need about 19 and a half grams worth of maltodextrin, which is a lot. When they call this questionable powder very light and airy, it is very light and airy. You can see how much brown butter is in here. It, it legitimately feels like grabbing nothing. So we're gonna start adding in that's not even a gram. I hope my scale actually picks this up. That says, that says seven grams. Oh my God, this is so much. Hopefully I can actually fit it in here. I didn't plan on it being this much. Okay, that's 17, maybe one more. This one doesn't do half grams. We're definitely gonna need the questionable scale. Look at how much powder that is. You see the ratio now? You can see how much, how much is down at the bottom for your fat versus the multi, yeah, it's a lot. Now it's everywhere. Now all we need to do, in theory, is blend this together. Now I definitely know what brown butter tastes like, but I've never made brown butter snow. It's stuck at the bottom. That sucks. Maybe put the snow down first and then do the brown butter on top, question mark. We're gonna have to help it a little bit. Just scrape the bottom down because it is getting stuck. We don't want it to be stuck. This was a lot of powder. I probably won't be doing this much for the next two. Come on, I feel like Josh from Mythical Kitchen. I really should get a better Roboku. You can see the brown butter specs. Enhance, enhance. Enhance. Can you see the brown butter specks? Maybe they're, they, they are there. Now we do want to season this just a bit because it's just going to taste like brown butter. Salt is going to go a long way. Let's give this a taste. Our little questionable brown butter powder. This is so fun. What the hell? Where's the popcorn? Uh, this is my favorite brand of popcorn. Super healthy. Ah, whatever. Now check this out. It, this actually made a lot, right? Like you can see how much of this we made. Now this is just salted popcorn. Nothing else on it. We're gonna do a nice pinch of our brown butter snow. And this looks so fun. This is go big. This is brown butter. It's all over my cutting board. That's fine. Now we have brown butter popcorn. I should sell this. This is a game changer, guys. Oh my God. Okay, what's the next one? Bacon. I gotta put this away. Yeah. Next one is bacon. This is relatively simple, probably easier than the brown butter one. I have four strips of thick cut 
applewood bacon. You can use whatever bacon you want. You can use pancetta. We just want the fat. Yes, it's not making any sizzling noises because I actually don't want this too hot so I can start rendering that fat without it getting too crispy. We're gonna cook this over a low medium heat to extract as much fat as possible off of that bacon. And yes, the bacon will be crispy by the end of it, which you can just use as a salad topper or maybe we will uh, top whatever we're making. It's a secret. Make sure after around 10 to 15 minutes of rendering on one side, we do give these a flip and then uh, continue to render because this is getting very crispy, very smoky in here. Yep, that's my face. Our bacon is now pretty much fully rendered. We're gonna remove this because we still wanna save this. Maybe we'll use it as a plate garnish for this idea that I have. Put this on some paper towels just to drain any excess fat, keeping all of the other fat into that pan because that's what we're gonna turn into snow. Just set this down real quick because we do need to strain this. So I have my little measuring cup and you know what we should do is we should weigh this out as well just to make sure we have the accurate weight. We have 25 grams worth of bacon fat, which would mean we would need like 23 grams worth of the other stuff, which is way too much. We're gonna go for 10 grams grams of bacon fat and whatever else we need. I think nine of that. Now this time we are gonna be using the questionable scale because it's far more accurate. We're gonna go ahead and get 10 grams worth of bacon fat. Oh, that's that's 12 grams. It's too much. That's better. 10 grams of bacon fat right here. That's, that's all we need. Look at how little. We still have all of this. If you wanna make a big batch or just save it, you know, dump it on some rice or some french fries. So that means we need nine grams of maltodextrin, which we are very much going to try to use questionable scale for. I feel like there's a spoon in here but it was swallowed, there it is. So now we're gonna do the, the, the maltodextrin first versus doing the liquid first like we did last time because that was kind of, kind of got trapped at the bottom. So let's try to get, it's gonna be quite a few of these. Oh, that's five, okay, that's five grams. We only need nine. Because remember the ratio is 10 to, 10 to nine, nine, nine to 10. We need 90% worth maltodextrin. This is very much science as it is tomfoolery. 9.1 grams, that's as close as we're gonna get. Put your questionable substance stuff down. Now we're gonna go all into here first. So this way we don't get too much because I have a lot of the brown butter left. What is happening? We're gonna let this cool just for, is it still pretty hot? It's still pretty hot. We want this to be like room temperature. We'll let it sit for just a second. So after this thing is cooled down to room temp, we're gonna do the same thing. Add our fat straight to our malted dextrin. Try to get as much of that out of there as possible. Making sure that you don't have too much fat in there is very important, otherwise it turns into sludge. I have gone through almost all of my spoons today. I wanna to make sure that none of it's sticking to the bottom. I think that method is way better. Oh, I can smell the, I can literally smell the bacon fat from here. Now we are gonna season this as well. Always season this because otherwise it doesn't taste like much. You gotta have the salt to bring out those flavors. That'll do it. Let's give this a quick taste, yeah? Just gonna do one of these. Tastes like bacon. A little subtle, a little more subtle than the brown butter was, but it still tastes like bacon. Let's try this. I have a special dish. Got a little bit of pasta. Do you see where I'm going with this? I do I do have to reheat this though. We use Chef Mike. It's okay. Check this out. Pasta. Okay. Got a little bit of spaghetti. Nothing crazy here. Then we're gonna do we're gonna do a sprinkle of our look at this. You ever think you can get bacon fat to look like that? I don't think so. A little bacon snow. It looks like Parmesan. That's so deceiving. Could you imagine giving this to your guest? Them thinking it's Parmesan cheese, but it's secretly bacon fat. Now that, my friends, is a flavor bomb. That is deceit, in a good way, potentially. I did a little poached egg right there, right on top. Maybe uh, we'll do like a small garnish of bacon, just to let you know that there is bacon in this, because you do have to let people know. Otherwise, it just does look like cheese. Bacon pasta, bacon, bacon pasta. I'm, I'm very excited to try this. Oh man, I shouldn't have had breakfast. <sighs> Cheers, let's see what this tastes like. Get that yolk, that's what you want. That's what everybody wants on the internet, right? Y'all have a yolk fetish. I just wanna know if this really does taste like bacon and eggs. That's kind of of what I was going with with this, you know, just a little pasta, bacon, and egg dish. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Immediately, immediately, almost died. Immediately tastes like bacon and eggs. This is a banger. This is really good. I think I like this better than the popcorn. Try this. That's like game changing. Last but certainly not least, we're gonna be working on our Wagyu steak. This is not a traditional Japanese A5 style Wagyu like we did for the Food Wars video, which you should totally check out in the description below. It's still really high quality and we just want the rendered fat from this. To make this happen, we're gonna be using, what, microwave, that's not microwave kun, that's a uh, toaster oven sun. This is very, very simple to do. And you could also just do this in a pan on the stove top if you want, but I find this method to be very reliable I don't have to pay attention. Line whatever tray you want with aluminum foil, which is very important so it traps all of that fat. Now we're gonna take our steak, we are going to season this very lightly with salt on both sides. Once it's seasoned, we're just gonna pop it right in. Now you could 
just go ahead and throw this into your microwave oven or your regular oven just like this. But because I want this to be a Food Wars style flavor bomb, I'm also going to throw in just a pinch of thyme or one thyme sprig as well as some garlic. And these are just gonna be aromatics. As this cooks, we're going to flip it and let the garlic and the thyme do its thing. So this way we're going to have Wagyu flavored with thyme and garlic. And we're gonna put it on top of something. It's gonna be amazing. So into the oven at like 250 degrees for an hour. Now it's been about an hour on the Wagyu and I did adjust the temperature about 325 instead of that 250 all the way through just so this way it would render more of the fat, but it's ready to go. Now unfortunately, because this isn't A5 Wagyu, which is three or four times more expensive than this, we didn't get as much fat as I wanted, but there's still enough to make this work. So I'm going to remove this now very well done steak. Uh, I'm still gonna eat it. We want this to go to waste, but we're just gonna remove it for now. Be so many dishes to clean after this. Look at, look at this thick. Oh my God, it's nice and like glistened. Let's just, you know, we're just gonna eat this piece right now because this looks still really good, even though it's very well done. Yep, that's delicious. Now we want the fat that's left in here. We gotta do this very carefully. I don't wanna lose any of that because there isn't much of it. All right, a little siphon, a little siphon action. Probably should have strained this, but that's okay. Just get what we can out of it. Ah, we didn't get too much sediment in there. I think it's gonna be fine, just like the brown butter was. Then we're just gonna toss this. Look at that, easy cleanup. At least something will be easy to clean today. Now here's my thought. Do you guys remember in Food Wars, for those of you who have seen it, one of the episodes, Yukihita makes that rice dish, which is chicken and egg and rice. They call it the Oyakodon. I probably butchered that pronunciation. I've made it a couple of times and Anime with Alvin has made it as well. A bunch of people have made this dish. I wanted to make my own rendition of this in a very fun way with this Wagyu snow. So that is what we're going to try to do today, right now, like literally right now. Should have measured that beforehand. So instead of an Oyakudan, I guess this would be kind of a gyudon, right? Where it's gonna be beef and rice, not chicken and rice. How much does this yield? Ooh, that gave us 15 grams, that's a lot. Okay, we're going to, gonna get us 10 grams, just like we did for the other one, for, for the bacon version. 10 grams of Wagyu fat, that's it. There's our 10 grams of Wagyu fat. The other thing is make sure it's not super, super hot, just like we did with the bacon. Add the salt to that. Now, let us try to make our Wagyu snow. So we need 10 grams, no, I'm sorry, nine grams of our questionable powder. I was wondering why the bag was so big when it arrived, but now, now I get it. You know what to do, powder first, Fat second, blend it. Uh, the comments down below, please remind me to go buy a new Roboku. Thanks guys. The Wagyu snow is done. So in my bowl, I have just a bit of white rice. I just, this is leftover white rice. I microwaved it. I just wanna see if I can achieve that same bit of wonder that Yukihita did. We're gonna do quite a bit of our snow right on top. So this way, when you look at it, you're like, what on earth is happening? What is in that bowl? It's Wagyu snow. This is the moment of truth. This is what we have all been waiting for. Cheers. This is so much freaking fun. It tastes like beef and rice. It tastes like this steak right over here is somehow on this, but it's not in my mouth, which we could remedy later, but still. I don't have the popcorn to show you, but just, just pretend it's here. This is a game changer for me. I think you can surprise a lot of people by doing dishes like this and really getting them excited about food, just like I was when we went out to that dinner. If you wanna see another weird experiment, click over here for Hachima's Mentos and Coke. This is the lab, and remember, keep playing with your food.